Because today we have Brachata. Now you can understand what is Brachata. Ciao a tutti! Hello everybody! How you doing? Welcome back! Eh? Which wine today? A very nice uh, and different kind of wine that maybe you're not expecting because this uh, grape is not uh, actually an, an indigenous grape from Tuscany oh. but in Tuscany it found a very nice terroir in some different part of Tuscany where the Merlot grows pretty well. Oh, Merlot. Okay, yeah, so today Merlot. Merlot. Yeah, 100% so. Merlot. So let's say the hometown, the homeland of Merlot is France, as you probably know. Mm -hmm. And uh, exactly is a little part, parcel of Bordeaux, which is called Pomerol. It's a very dark color, pretty dark. So it is darker than the Sangiovese. Yeah, definitely. Pretty okay. thick color, you mm -hmm. can tell. So, so, yeah, it's very thick. Yeah, the, the vintage is 2015. That was in very part of Tuscany, pretty hot. Uh, for example, in Montalcino, uh, was a five star vintage. So, in many different parts of Tuscany, it was a beautiful vintage. And here we are in Castellina and Chianti. So, 25 30 minutes away from Siena, 45 minutes away from Florence. We're in the heart of Chianti Classico. And this is their super Tuscan. So the only wine, they're not using San Giovese in it. So they put in Merlot, 100%. So starting from the color, so you don't see any brick, uh, you know, tendons going on, on, a, on a nail. So, and if you put it against a white surface, you're not gonna be pretty able to see yeah. what is written behind. So it's really dark. And like San Giovese is not, right? Pinot Noir, you know, it's the Antociani, you say in the Antocianos, I think in English, that gives a polyphenol that gives color to the wine. And you find it in the skins of grapes, of course. So it depends on the So grapes. Merlot is full of these Antocianos, as well as uh, Caps, so Cabernet Sauvignon, even more than Cap Frank, and then Syrah. Anyway, going to the nose, to be honest, we just opened this bottle a few yeah. minutes ago. You need to give a few air to this wine, you know, maybe 45 minutes, an hour before you sip. But anyway, the nose is now slowly, slowly opening, right? So, very evident. Yes. Yeah. Ch again, cherry, cherry. Black, black cherry. Black cherries, marasca cherries, yeah. and prawns. Prune. Prune. Is there any balsamic here, Luca? A little or? balsamic, then it's not too much at the moment, to be honest with me. I say with licorice, a little bit anise. Yeah. Looking for a flower, which is pretty hidden at the moment, but a dark, a dark violet, and also you know what I'm feeling now? Some uh, herbs like leaf of tomato, ah, tomato, foglia di pomodoro, skin of yeah. tomatoes, uh -huh. and the tomato should be basically more cabernet. These are very elegant tannins, and this beautiful acidity that is. Accompanying, right? The tanning. Just very, very good. Uh, very good. Ah, so the, the, the soil is pretty rocky there, right? And this is using, uh, I mean, these guys are using wood. And I'm sure they're not using uh, uh, first passage uh, barrels. No, no, like no. They're using used. No, very old. old. Right, pretty old. Maybe third, third yeah. fourth, fifth passage at least, yeah. because you can taste some, maybe little 225 hectoliters barrels. So that is. So, salute. Salute. I like when it's a little bit, the tanning is present. I like when it's crispy. Uh, it's very alive. And now some herbs are coming out again. So, which one, which are the famous Merlot? You yeah, know. No, Pomerol. Pomerol. Said, you know, so Pomerol, you know, and, the best um, Merlot in the world. In Italy, in Friuli, Venezia, Giulia, a region up in the north, east of Italy, very close to Venice, uh, they're known for. For the Merlot, it's easy right. going Merlot, okay. so easy drinkable, so everyday kind of Merlot, 20 30 euros a bottle maximum. Then in Tuscany, Merlot in the last 30 40 years boomed a little bit thanks to Bulgari, for example, a wine region in the south of Livorno, which is the uh, next area we're going to explore. Eh? Merlot in Tuscany boomed in, in Bulgaria, yeah. as we said, eh? and so also in the in the other parts of Tuscany when the first uh, super Tuscan uh, was made. Yes. And it was 1968, a little winery, not a little winery, a pretty medium sized winery in the heart of Tuscany of Chianti Classico called San Felice. Mm -hmm. And they made a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. And it was the very first super tough using French barriques, 
Yeah? And so that was the very first time together with Bolgeri in Cisa della Rocchetta Salsicaia in the same kind of years. In this case, we have one of these examples of Tuscan Merlots uh, for a good uh, proportion quality and price, pretty reasonable, which uh, we're gonna pair together later with something. Uh, yeah, soon we're going to cook something. Luca is gonna cook for us. Rosting chala. Mm -hmm. So we are going to try this wine with something grilled and we are going to understand which what is better, if it's the pork or the beef. And Luca is gonna tell us. So let's prepare. So see you later. <laughs> Ciao. Okay. Ciao a tutti, innanzitutto. We have some man manzetta prussiana here. And chianina. And chianina. Chianina is a female big animal, right? The one of the Bistecca la Fiorentina, the yes, T-bone yes, steak yes. from Florence, right? This one is the T-bone, I told you. Sure. Yeah. They were both very tasty. Uh -huh. The Manzetta Prussiana was a bit uh, aged longer mm -hmm. than the Chianina. It was but, younger. Yeah, they're both succulent. Tasty. And tasty. Because with the juicy, I, I, I don't think uh, Chianti is the best. The fat of the Manzetta Prussiana was very important. Mm -hmm. So we had a big fat part in this, uh, mm -hmm. this part of it. The Chianina was a little bit lighter in, in terms of fatness. But yeah, the juicy of the Chianina was even stronger than the yeah. Prussiana, so the yeah. canina you need to masticate, to chew, Why? chew, chew, to chew. chew. Not yeah. because it was chewy, it was not chewy, but the canina being mm. a very big animal, mm. it means a very big animal, female, and full of nerves. Yeah, they were the worker animals. Mm. And yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They were workers animals, carrying carriages for yeah. people, you know, farming, you know. So that needs needs a longer operation in your mouth. Mm -hmm. And the Panzetta Prussiana was uh, stronger in the taste for the fat. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. And I would definitely pair, for example, with the Manzetta Prussiana, probably this Merlot. Oh, the Merlot was good. Two glasses. Yeah, yeah. very, very uh, crispy. Uh, these black. Uh, Spices and yeah, I would definitely pair the Merlot. So of the trigger. tanning was good. Yeah, tanning. Like yeah, not too aggressive. Mm -hmm. But I would more. I would be leaning more with a bistecca like that uh, of Canina. That would maybe something I would say drier, mm. drier. So mm. some Nebbiolo probably mm -hmm. from Piedmont, from Torino, mm -hmm. from the Langes Hills. Mm. So what would you put the Merlot with? Yeah, it would be almost perfect with this kind of cats. With the, the Prussiana. Prussiana. With the, fatty with the fat and fatness of that meat and the frollatura. So with the agedness of that kind of cat. The Canina though is younger. It's a big animal, a worker animal, and very young. I mean, comparable. It's not, uh, it's not aged like the Prussiana. So we're looking for something drier, mm -hmm. a red wine, a, a, a full body red wine. We're not talking about a glass of Chianti called Lipisani, mm -hmm. but a nice Chianti Classico Reserva. Or Reserva, okay. A nice Chianti Classico, a nice Brunello di Montalcino. So I'm okay. talking about indigenous Tuscan grapes. Toscany means Sangiovese. So a very nice Chianina like that would be definitely that perfect. perfect. With a glass yeah. of Sangiovese from Monte Pulciano, Monte Alcino, or the Chianti Classico. Or the Chianti Classico Reserva. Reserva, because okay. of course you need some alcohol. And Reserva is even one alcoholic degree percentage higher than mm. not Reserva. And of course, a little passage in wood would be helping you. Mm, just to give some more like a, a little bit oaky, not, not too not much. Too much. Not but just too much. A, a tiny bit. Not too much. Maybe some oakness, you need more yeah. of this. The to contrast. To contrast the fatness, of course. Mm. The, the Merlot is aging, as we said before, in barrique. So little French oak barrels. And also that little soft vanilla taste mm -hmm. with that the fighting very yeah. which Indeed. is sweet you know, so. okay so and what about the pork so if this was a pork steak yeah definitely pork uh, pork you know depending of course the way you cook the pork we grilled it with wood you know we just put some rosemary in and salt and pepper and me personally i will always choose a sangiovese uh, with the pork itself okay yes. okay i will so always just... choose a sangiovese because merlot even if this Merlot of Tregole, it's really different kind of Merlot. So mm -hmm. totally different from the one you have in your mind if yeah. you're thinking about Napa Valley or Sinova <laughs> Merlots. Very dry, not too sweet, but it's still sweetier than a Sangiovese, yeah. Yeah. which is drier. 
uh, way drier. And with pork, with, with generally all kind of grilled meats, I would prefer a Sancho Pesce or a Nebbiolo. A Merlot like that would be perfectly paired with a braised, with something you cook with a sauce. Oh, a sauce. So a wild okay. boar yeah. in umido, we say in Tuscany in Italy. Mm-hmm. In umido means with tomato, tomato sauce, mm-hmm. and garlic, and maybe capers, and olives. So a big soup cooking with a red wine for a long while, that'd be perfect. Like a, that. a little bit more greasy. See, si, definitely greasy. So, well, anyway, let's uh, so make a salute. Ciao, ciao a tutti. Ciao a tutti. Eh. <laughs> And Alla prossima. Alla prossima. <laughs>